My name is Dante. You may know me for one thing or another, but um, if anything, you'll know me for this video. Before I get started, trigger warning for self-harm, suicide, a bunch of stuff. But I don't want to just make you sad or whatever, so I'm going to film this while preparing some food, I guess. I don't know the entire reason as to why I am doing this video unscripted or whatever, right? But, some things to know about me, I guess. I have lost more people in my life than about twice my age. And I'm not a young man. I've lived a long life. Um, but I guess the reason for me wanting to, to talk about this is just an idea as I was uh, sitting here. Preparing my food and reflecting on a lot of things that I often do as I live alone. Which is the question of why so many people who are young kill themselves. Right? <clears throat> now, plenty of people have very definite reasons as to why. And plenty of people have guesses. What I'm going to give you is a guess. Because I do not pretend to speak for the dead. Um... But anyway, basically, your 20s are awful. Um, and I think that kind of is a mundane reality that not a lot of people are willing to face, right? Your 20s are going to be awful for a lot of reasons. Um, and for some, that's too much, right? Because whenever people talk about their 20s, I guess I'll break for a second. When I told my, my friends and family that I wanted to kill myself, I always heard this response. It was, oh, you just need to wait. It'll get better. However, when I would complain about a problem, I would hear a very different response, which is, oh, just wait till you get older. It'll get way worse. What kind of conundrum is that? And maybe they're right about both. I've only seen one half of it. That's because I'm in my 20s. Now, the thing is, your 20s are going to suck. It's going to be the most stressful time of your life on average. It's going to be fucking horrible. And for people who haven't had issues from being very young and had a good childhood... They've had a good enough childhood to reflect on memories that'll keep them going through their 20s and let their ambitions and everything that had allowed them to be strong to keep them strong through their 20s. And for people whose life has sucked, they see their 20s as their first bit of freedom and their first, oh, it'll get better. And then it doesn't. And then they have to think, oh, there's ten more years of this. Arbitrarily, of course. Before things will even start to look up. You take someone who has suffered a horrible life. And you tell them it'll get worse before it gets better. And a lot of them are trying to wait that out. Would you wait 50 years before ever being happy? hard to blame them. Again, I don't speak for the dead, but I do speak for myself. By the way, when I'm preparing, I'm curious, some chopped up chicken. Currently heating up a chunk of butter with some MSG, some parsley flakes, and some pepper. Throw a little bit of oil in it. Get it going at a low temperature, and then you'll kick it up. Right, once the butter gets melted, you'll throw in the onions. It'll be good. I don't speak for the dead, but I speak for myself. I've tried to kill myself way more times than I can even count, right? I don't tell people when they say they want to kill themselves that it's going to get better. Because I would be lying to myself, and I respect those who are in this situation that are willing to end their life. And maybe it doesn't. And that is okay. Because not everyone deserves better and not everyone will get better. 
you just get used to your new normal, right? If it were up to my hand, I would not be here. But I'm bad at killing myself. I have commitment issues. I cannot commit suicide. <sighs> when you've experienced death enough, you learn to joke with your friends. And I know him well enough that I can consider him a friend. So, I speak for myself in, in, in the sense that if you aren't going to kill yourself, you have to do something uh, uh, like that else. If you have to sit at this table and you've experienced being sad, force yourself to be happy. And if you can't get happy, like, I don't get happy. I don't deserve happy. I've given up on happy. I'm just trying to spend a moment in which I'm not crying, right? Because that, to me, is as good as happy can get. And if that is what you have for you, fuck what everyone else says. That's good enough, if it's good enough for you, okay? I'm not a person who believes that everyone who is not the normal, the neurotypical, the neuroaverage is broken, right? Because even if you are broken, I'm not going to be the one to say that they need to be fixed, right? Because that would be assuming that things are going to get better. And it's just simply not the case. And I speak for myself on that, right? And that's okay. Right? If you're born with one leg, People don't tell you, you know, it'll be better you're growing a new leg. Well, people have never experienced happiness to the extent in which others have. It's hard for them to understand that, and that's fine. I do not speak for the dead, but I speak for a man who never left the moment where he fell asleep with pills in his stomach and woke up and pulled the trigger on a gun. And it jammed. Among a myriad of others. And that's fine. For me, I realized that there's no one who could help me. When you experience a troubled life, your, your space that you exist in, your mind, your mind, your room, is a very dark and horrific place, right? That place that houses your nightmares. Asking people to come into there is a very big thing, and not many people are willing to do it. They'll give you a pamphlet. They'll tell you, hey, you know, you just need to hang in there. It'll get better. And the equivalent of that is throwing a flashlight to you in that dark abyss in which you reside and just hoping you'll find your way out. I don't want a half ass way out. I wanted help. And when I realized that no one was there and the world was going to keep turning and that train was going to go without me, I stopped crying so much. It's good to cry. It's good to have those tears for those moments. But you're crying on your own time. And if you're not going to kill yourself and you're not going to fold, or like me, you're unable to. And stop feeling sorry for yourself. I reflect a lot in my life. And I realize that my self-destructive behaviors and me making myself feel bad for things that were out of my control was just me putting myself in the middle of things, right? If I'm not going to kill myself, and I'm just going to arbitrarily make my life worse. I'm going to let these things like get, like, what's the fucking point? What am I trying to prove? Am I trying to prove that I'm sad? Am I trying to prove that, oh yeah, life is bad? I don't need a fucking reminder, right? It was just me feeling sorry for myself. And ultimately, it was because I was so used to self-harming myself, mentally and physically, that that became what I was used to and what I was happy with, Right? This is why so many young people kill themselves. Because it's all they know. All they know is killing themselves. Right? 
as they become adults, the habits change, right? You never stop self-harming. You just change the blade on the razor, right? You might stop eating. You might, you know, stay up too late. You might start cutting people off and feel horrible guilt and you don't know why, right? You want to keep these relationships but you feel like you don't deserve them. You feel like... I don't know what you feel like. Because I, I, it's hard for me to even describe it, right? This, by the way, the water, wine, and limes. Very little, little wine, but it really spices up the uh, water lime. If you're going to self-harm yourself, do it right. Okay. If you truly hate yourself and truly think that you deserve the absolute worst, do it fucking right, okay? Because all you want to do is sit in bed all day. And all you want to do is cry and complain. Go days and days without showers. And it's okay to cry, but you're crying on your own time. And when you do that... It's about as good as you're feeling. It's about as happy as you're feeling. You might trick yourself into saying it's guilt, but it's not. Don't fucking lie to yourself, because you can't lie to me, because I had to sit in the mirror and realize this for myself, okay? And that's why I wish to share it with you. Of course, I don't mean to preach the ideas, but I do mean to instill it in your head of what it could be. If you're going to self-harm yourself, if you truly hate yourself, and get out of bed. Right. Get out of bed. Eat. Cook a meal. Right? Prepare your food. Because that's what you don't want to do. All you want to do is sit there and cry. And that's okay. But you don't hate yourself if you're giving yourself the ability to sit there and cry. So don't say you hate yourself because you're giving yourself a pass, right? You want to sit there and lay and suffer, right? Like you don't want to get up and do better for yourself. That's not self-hatred. That's self-pity. But the confusion of those things leads to a self-destructive pattern in which... People don't understand their feelings, and it's pointless. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. As you lay in bed, paralyzed by your thoughts and decisions for a fucking month, that energy is holding you there. That energy can be used for purpose. This is what I call weaponizing my mental illness. Right, I've heard it also say rewiring your brain should tell you just about how I see living versus how the medical field sees living. Um, or I guess what we've been through. Use it to your advantage. Use your self hatred. If you're if you become good at hating yourself, then hate yourself good, right? I fucking hated cooking, cleaning, doing the dishes, and everything. Right? But I'm doing it because I fucking hate myself. And you know what happens? Shit gets done. Right? You are broken, but you do not need to be fixed. Right? You have suffered this way your entire life. Why the fuck should it be different now? And if it's not, is that a bad thing? Right? People say I've gotten better over the years. No. I've simply learned how to hold this anchor that's been weighing me down and throw it effectively to grab onto something and pull myself toward my goal. The self-harm never stops. You just change the razor. 
right? And I will never tell you that your way of doing things is wrong. It's bad. Right? Because I have no judgment for you. I'm not a good person. I do not pretend to be. And I cannot tell someone not to kill themselves because I've tried to do it on multiple times, twice with intent. I do not speak of the dead. I just speak for a man who should be. A man who never left that moment. And a man who doesn't, doesn't wish to be here. That is what I offer to you in the terms of words. And I don't pretend to be correct either. I don't pretend to know everything. I'm a learner. And honestly, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong about all, all of this. Everything. Because if I'm wrong... That means there's better out there. And would you rather be right or be happy? Is the entire idea there. Teens kill themselves because they don't understand what better is because they've never had it. And they don't have the strength to go through another 20 years before it gets better. And people will use these self-destructive habits. Wrong. Because they don't know how. Because no one tells them how to do it right. If you want to truly hate yourself and aren't just feeling sorry for yourself, then make a change. And the way that you make a change and you truly self-harm yourself is to get up out of bed. Feed yourself. All you want to do is stay in bed and, and sleep. You force yourself to get out of bed. Do you know why? Because you hate yourself. You've successfully gotten out of bed. Who gives a fuck about the reason? If you're going to hate yourself, hate yourself right. Hate yourself with intention. Hate yourself with purpose. Hate yourself to your benefit. Because if you're not going to kill yourself, you have to be here tomorrow. So do something for yourself. I have to be here tomorrow. And if I'm going to hate myself, I'm going to sit here and cook this fucking meal that I don't want to eat because I hate how I look. I'm recording this with my shirt off because I fucking hate my body. But at least something's getting done. If you're going to hate yourself, do it. This is what I've created. It's just a big piece of lettuce. I've got some jalapenos. I don't know how good the ring light picks it up. Right, we've got chicken, onions, which I lightly saute. I'll usually eat this in a corn tortilla. The way I eat food is I put whatever I want together. Some vessel, usually a corn tortilla. Um, I threw them over the side of the thing before recording. Um, but yeah, I'm going to begin to eat this meal. Whether I enjoy it or not is, you know, kind of not up to me. But those are just some thoughts I have, right? I often think a lot about a lot of things. And I have things to share, I suppose. I'll put this on the internet and I don't care who sees it. But if someone sees it and they get value out of it, then tremendous. I'm not an inspiration. I don't pretend my way is right, because if my way is the best way that you're looking up to, then fuck, you're going to be sad forever. No. Use the ideas that I can tell you as what you want and what you don't want, and build upon that your own road to walk towards your goal, whether it be happiness or just okay. will not tell you either one is wrong. Because I have sympathy for whatever you've gone through. If something makes you cry, it has validation. Right? No bigger. Big or small.
I don't have a good way to end this. I'm gonna go enjoy this. And, uh, I hope you guys have a, uh, okay day. And may your tomorrows be brighter than your tonight's.